Janice Simpson and her husband Bob are co-owners of the Texas Rangers. Though they've enjoyed great success, Janice will tell you her life began with great pain. We became his wives, more or less, as opposed to his children. Janice and her sister were mentally and sexually abused by their father. It started when their mother died. Janice was just five. The abuse continued for seven years. We did all the, all the uh, cooking, cleaning, and, um, and eventually it led into wifely duties. And that he'd promised to quit, to never do it again, and, and then it would start right back up again. As a child, I did whatever I had to do to get that love or to feel that love. When Janice was 12, her father was sent to prison for abusing his daughters. So she lived in foster homes or with family members. As a teenager, Janice started drinking. After I got out of high school was when I just kind of went wild and crazy. I think I was looking for security. Still, I think looking for that older father figure types, but really trying to fill my life, this void that's in my life with love. At 18, Janice married an alcoholic and they had two sons. Her view of love was still distorted. I used sex to be able to to love and and I know that that came from my father. Janice's husband physically abused her and she divorced him. At 26, she met Bob and they married in 1998. And then after we got married and we had two beautiful girls, I think just kind of like every marriage, then the honeymoon part is over and you have to learn to love each other without the fireworks and explosions and, and, and everything that you think, oh, I, we're such in love. And, and I was like, well, wait a minute. That's, he doesn't love me anymore, I guess. Bob soon became the CEO of a multi-billion dollar energy corporation. The couple continued to drift apart. We were probably worth a couple hundred million, probably two or three hundred million at the time. And so we had lots of money, um, but not, not happiness. And so I didn't care anymore. I went the opposite direction and um, started going and drinking. And um, that led back into drugs, into cocaine. That was one thing, you know, having money won't make you happy. But you can sure get in a lot of trouble with it. One night, when Janice was home alone, something simple got her attention. And I went into the bathroom and I looked in the mirror. And my eyes were dark. When I looked in that mirror that day, there was no life in those eyes anymore. And uh, I had this picture taped up to my mirror. And it was a picture of me and my daughter. And I had light in my eyes then. And I looked back at myself and I said, "That's this is not who I want to be anymore. So Janice checked herself into rehab. She completed the program and never touched drugs again. Alcohol was a different story. Then a friend invited her to a Bible study. They said, does anybody have a prayer need? And he was pulling at my heart. I mean, it's like he was reaching in and pulling my heart out, basically. And I lifted up my hand and I, um, I remember saying, um, I'm a closet drinker and I don't want to drink anymore. And I know that there is only one way that this is going to stop. And I asked them to pray for me. They all came over they laid their hands on me. And he took that urge away from me that moment. And when I say that, I mean, it's pretty strong because I was drinking a lot of vodka at night, a lot. And I never will forget that day that it, that happened. I knew at that instant what love really is. Um, and that was that, that he loves me enough, he died for me. And that he really doesn't want me to carry that stuff around with me anymore. Janice was a new person and Bob began to notice something different about his wife. As God was working in my life, and my attitude changed, my husband's 
did his thing. Gradually, he started coming to church. He started going to Bible study. Bob gave his life to Christ in 2009. In a marriage that should have never stayed together, came back together with God in the middle. Today, Janice and Bob are closer than ever. They're still rooting for their Rangers, and they recently launched Raylan Records, a record company in Nashville, Tennessee. My prayer for women is to know it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter where you've been, and God showed me that, that um, it doesn't matter. Don't look at who the world says you are. Look at who God says you are, and you are His beloved, and He loves you.